Hi, I'm Andy and in the previous video I used Vegetation Studio Pro to texture and populate a terrain. But I didn't explain how to set up the texturing on the biome and I know that's something that some people have problems with. So I've created the basic terrain here using Gaia. So the first thing I need to do is to add Vegetation Studio Pro to the scene. Don't need that. And the next thing I need to do is to add some textures to the terrain. So you go to this paint tool, paint terrain tool here, uh, paint textures, and then we need to add some terrain layers. I'm just going to add the default textures um, for now. We're not going to do anything that particularly artistic, but this will give you a good idea of how it works. So I'm going to add all eight. So now we've got the eight textures added, we need to create a biome. So I'm going to go into create um, Vegetation Studio Pro 8 texture biome and I'm going to call it grass biome. So we have 8 textures. So what we need to do now is to add that biome to Vegetation Studio Pro. So what we do is we drag it into here. And we're just going to use the one biome and that's going to be our default one. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set the water height because everything we do texturing wise is related to the, it's based on the height of the, the water. So the sea level here, if we look at the water surface, we can see it's at 25 units. So I'm going to put 25 into here. And now what we can do is press Control shift r and it will texture the terrain based on the settings we've got. So this is just some default settings, so we will need to tweak these. So to edit them, we're going to edit the biome and then we're going to go into Train System Pro and edit the splat map. So here you can see the eight textures that we've got and whether they're enabled. So to start with, we're just going to turn them all off, apart from the sand. Here we go. For each of these textures, you can see that there are two graphs. Um, the first graph determines the height range in which the texture is applied, and the second graph um, determines the steepness value over which the texture is applied. So what it does at every single pixel is it um, evaluates the height and the steepness and then works out how much of each texture to apply then blends the textures together um, based on the proportion of their contribution through these graphs so at the minute we only have one texture enabled so to start with we'll just delete all of the data existing data from the graph so we've got a clean state to work with Okay, so that's done. So what we're going to do to start with is say, okay, we're going to want some sand from sea level up to, for now, we'll say six meters above sea level. And we're just going to have a very sharp transition for demonstration purposes. And then for the grass, we'll have no grass at all. And then start the grass at say three, four meters above sea level. And there'll be a sharp transition. And then if we apply this, and remember to enable the texture. You can see that up to a couple of meters above sea level it's just sand and then during this region they both have a, con a full contribution of one and so we get an even split, an even blend and then past that it's just grass. So that's not actually what we're going to want, so we're going to want a much uh, more gentle blend. So for the sand we're going to have full sand up to a little bit above sea level that we're going to have a quite a sharp blend off. And then for the grass, we're going to start it quite low to the ground and then have a more gentle blend in. There you go, we've got a little bit of a beach starting to come in now. 
Maybe we're going to want to blend the grass in a bit sooner. There we go, something like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some rocky texturing on the steep bits of the cliff. So we don't want any rockiness right by the sea. So we're going to blend it in from a few meters. He said it the wrong thing. So we're going to blend it in from a few meters above the sea. Enable the texture. But we only want it on the steep surfaces. So here we go, an angle at up to say 20 degrees, we don't want any of this texture. And then as we get up to say around 30, we've got 36 degrees, it's going to have blend in more and more of these textures. So we try that. And already you can see it's quite powerful. So when you get these little ridges, um, we start the grass starts going away. Um, getting replaced by this rocky texture. However, there's still contribution of grass even on these steep areas. So if we go back into the grass, we're going to start fading out the grass textures once the angle goes above, say, I don't know, 25 degrees. Let's try that. There we go. It's much more well defined now. So in those intermediate angles, you get a bit of grass. Uh, mixed in with some of the rocks, but on the steeper areas it's just purely rock texture. And then towards the sea you've just got the sand. So another tool that's really useful here is this show heat map button. So if we tick that, that shows for each texture where it's going to apply in real time. So in the sand we can see here but the darker areas are where there's going to be more texture so we can edit this in real time we can push the beach up and down and see where it's going to go the grass is starting there and then we can edit the steepness here and we can see see maybe that's going to be a better so just fade it out a bit and then we turn that off again regenerate and see our results so what we might want down here is maybe we want some muddy areas. We've got a muddy texture here, so maybe some muddy areas near the sea, but where there's a bit more angle. So we're going to fade this off over a couple of meters and then just fade it in over quite steep angles. Let's see where it's going to apply. So yeah, we're going to get a little bit of application around these sharper edges, but not at all on the beaches. And remember to enable it. There we go. So we can just see around here. Maybe it's a bit too sharp for the sand. I think I maybe need it a bit higher as well. Yeah, we've got a bit too much there. So back to the heat map. Tone this down a bit. I mean, you can sort of get the idea. These aren't the the best textures for this sort of thing. I think we maybe need to just play around it. You'll spend ages just playing around with settings, just trying to get the effects that you want. That's not too bad. It just adds a bit more interest around sea level breaks up the, the beach a bit. So we've got this big flat area of grass here so maybe we want to blend in a different grass texture. So we can use that using some purling noise. So what we're going to do is going to keep a similar setup for the second grass texture. So we're going to start blending it in from a few meters above sea level. And we're only going to apply it 
at certain angles. Enable it. So at the minute you can see that it's, it's applying it evenly, it's mixing it evenly all the way across the train with this grass texture. So what we can do now is to use some noise. So on this first texture we're going to use Perlin noise. I'll turn on the heat map so we can see what it does. So that will apply some noise to the texture. And then what we can do with this one is also apply some Perlin noise, but we're going to invert the noise, which will mean that this texture, will, second grass texture, will get applied where this first grass texture isn't, as long as we keep the noise scale and noise offset the same, so the noise patterns match up. So if we turn off the heat map, there we can start to see some patches of one texture and one certain patches of the other texture. Maybe we need to turn the noise scale up a bit if the detail is too fine. So maybe we can turn that up to 15 on both of these textures. And then you get slightly bigger areas of the darker texture and slightly bigger areas of the lighter texture. Yeah, that's not too bad. So what else have we got? We've got this interesting texture here. This is a bit more of a rocky texture, so maybe in the highlands we'll start using this texture. So let's show the heat map again. Um, sort of height do we need this? Delete that key. So yeah, we'll start it off around here somewhere, blend it in over a, over a range. And again, we're only going to want it on not too steep an area. Although it's more of a rocky texture, so I think we can afford to have it over some slightly steeper terrain. So. Like that. There we go. So yes, yeah, so we've got this this texture is applied it's just at higher altitudes and on fairly steep terrain. Maybe turn that down a bit because we've got all these rocks here we maybe don't want. Then you can see as you get higher up, you get this kind of more of a rocky texture. Whereas down here we get more of the pure grass. And then lastly, maybe you want to do something with this stony texture here. So maybe we want to break up some of the beach area with some pebbles. So let's just have it applied very low down. Um, we'll do it on all steepnesses and we'll just blend it in with a bit of noise. Let's see what this does. You can see that we can change the weight. So by default, the, this has a weight of one. So if this has a weight of one and then this text, texture has a weight of one, you'd have a one to one blend. Whereas if we increase the weight of this one, you'd have like a five to one blend. So you'd have much more of this stony texture. Whereas if you set it down, you'd have much more of the, the sandy texture. So to make it take over, maybe we have a lot of it, but only do it over very specific steepnesses. And maybe we just have some kind of intermediate steepness here.
just very specific places we want it. Yes, there we go, something like that. We've just got these small areas of pebbles amongst the beach. It's just where the steepness is just about right. And I think we'll just take down the height a bit so we only get it right on the edge of the sea. Yeah, it just adds a bit more detail. So as I said, we're not making a work of art here. These aren't the greatest textures to be using. But you can sort of see how by using a bunch of different textures, different rules, you can start to build up. Um, you can start to build up from beaches at the bottom to grassy areas in the middle to specific textures just on the slopes. And then different different textures again at different altitudes, and you get quite a compelling landscape here actually. just fly around a bit we can see it it doesn't it doesn't look terrible and of course you can spend you can spend hours tweaking all these settings and trying to get all your curves right and to be fair it does take a long time to get something looking nice but this is a good starting point so i hope that was useful and good luck creating your own textures and your own biomes thanks